Mr. Sams? What are you doing clear over there? Well, you know, what did you do this morning? What are you talking about? My Got word. Up, came to work. No, I'm thinking before you went to work, you... There's an odor about you. Well, usually, yeah. But well, what, what's more offensive today than usual? That you must have put that cologne on when you shaved, but of course you didn't shave. So, what are you doing with that that stink? Well, cl- well I, we were talking. Oh, I knew we were talking gosh. about vapor pressure, oh, and volatile yeah, liquids today. So I thought I'd, you know, yeah, oh, lather dress, it on, dress the occasion. Tears are coming well, to my, my eyes. It's so Avon strong. now. I mean, well, it's I'm Avon, so that makes it house. better. Yeah, oh, have mercy! It stinks so bad. <laughs> have mercy! Ha! Huh. All right, I'll try and bear it. I will try and bear it here. Right. Oh my gosh! You see, um, it's got to be better than I normally smell. Um, <laughs> what does that smell like? <laughs> I don't, <know. laughs> don't want to even Mr. talk Sam's over there. Bo. <laughs> <laughs> oh mercy! All right, today we want to talk about vapor pressure of solutions. If you remember back uh, previously, we did talk about vapor pressure, but that was vapor pressure of a pure substance. Mm-hmm. This is the vapor pressure of a pure solution. Here's an interesting experiment. If you had a beaker filled with water and a beaker filled with some solution, okay, an interesting thing would happen as time progresses. And then you seal it with some kind of a big jar, as yeah. you can see in this picture here. What would actually happen, that would be intriguing, is that over time the water would all evaporate and it would fill beaker number two. And beaker number one would be empty. Now why is that? Uh, well, it has to do with vapor pressure. Now you see, because the vapor pressure of water has a particular number at a particular temperature. Mm-hmm. But the vapor pressure of the solution is what? It's always lower than it's the pure water. Lower. So that means that the water will evaporate more quickly, more mm-hmm. readily, than will the, um, the solution, the salt water or whatever it might be. And therefore, what's going to happen, as this evaporates and then it recondenses over here, it will, it will do that. Very little of the... Actually, when the salt water, um, assume this is salt water, when the aqueous solution evaporates, the only thing that actually evaporates is the water. The salt stays behind. Yep. So it actually is going to move all of the water over here. So this leads us to a concept called vapor pressure of solutions. Vapor pressure of solutions are always lower than the vapor pressure of Vapor pressure of the pure solvent. Yeah, by the way, that showed up on the AP test a few years ago, didn't it? It was a, a very a exact one the question. Yeah. Why did that happen? Why occur? did that happen? All right. So we f- he said this already, but solutions have a... Uh, so solutions have a lower vapor pressure than the pure solvent. Lower salt. vapor pressure than the pure solvent. This is called Raoult's Law. Raoult! I love his name, Raoult. Raoult. I say it with deep voice because Raoult. it sounds so good. <laughs> that was weird. Okay, I assume that a solute has no vapor pressure. By the way, in Raoult's law, if we assume that the solute has no vapor pressure, the um, Raoult's law is Times. so the pressure of the solution is equal to the mole fraction. Remember the mole mm-hmm. fraction from last time of the um, solvent. solvent. Now it's a solvent right. times that's the, thing exerting the, the vapor pressure. Of the solvent, the normal vapor pressure, P zero. Sometimes, we, yeah, we call that P P zero. Yep. All right, and we'll do some math now. If they both have a vapor pressure, uh, usually this is a liquid liquid solution. Um, then the pressure or the equation is. So if I have a liquid liquid, you'll say P total is equal to X of A chemical A times the P of A plus X of B times the P of B. Etc. If you've got three of them, you could say XC and PC, etc. And so these are the equations. We'll use these in some mathematical examples in just a minute. Now, this actually is a derivation of the phase diagram we talked about recently. Is that if we have uh, pure water right here, you can see here. This is his um, vapor pressure line right here, right? Mm-hmm. And this is the you know this is a liquid and this is a gas. And what happens is is that the vapor pressure gets lowered. Um, because of this and actually changes its freezing point and its boiling point which we'll talk about a little bit later but it lowers it you see the blue line right here is lower than the red line and therefore the vapor pressure is lower okay so let's uh, do some examples All right. mathematical okay what's the vapor pressure of a solution that contains 155 grams of table sugar dissolved in 100 grams of water well we have to find the mole fraction is yes. what we need to do now it's important we need to find the mole fraction of what 
of both the solute and the actually well, just, I, this one we just want the just the water there. because yeah. this is uh, sugar and sugar will not does, will not evaporate, and so I want to find the moles of each. So for sugar, I have 155 grams of sugar. I'll say sug. And then they will see, uh, is it 342? 342. How did you know 342 that? 342 grams of sugar. I just memorized these things. One mole of sugar. And uh, sugar. about a half. Uh, 0. 0.45. 0. 0.45 moles of sugar. Now the water, we have 100 grams of water. So 100 grams over one. And there are 18 grams in one mole. So that's quite a few. 5.56. 5.56. So the mole fraction of the water, very important, is of the water, of, yes. the, sh of the solvent, will be 5.56 divided by 5.56 plus 0 0.45. And that'll be 0 0.9, I'm saying. 0.924. So now that's just the mole fraction. This is x mm -hmm. of water, right? So now I'm going to say the p total will be equal to the mole fraction, 0 0.924, times the vapor pressure, which they gave us two in the problem, was 23.76 torr. And we just get a number, 22 or something. 20, yeah, 21.95. So let's dig it out, 22.0. Call that 22? Yep. 22.0 tor. Now, it's lower, isn't it? Now, just it as a side note, 23.7 drops to 22.0. Not a big, big drop. Right, because it's still bit. mostly water. It's 92% water still. Yeah, so it's, it, but that's how you do these problems. Mm -hmm. Okay, it gets a little bit more complex if we have two chemicals that both have vapor pressure. And so we have acetone and we have um, chloroform mixed together. So we know things about the acetone. We have 5.81 grams. And actually, the math is very easy on this. If you have 5.81 grams, I'm going to try and convert to moles. Then there's uh, 58.1 grams oh, in one nice mole. Amount. This would be a 0.1 moles, right? Yep. Now, this is of the acetone. So let's do the other one. We have the chloroform. We have 11.9 grams over one, and there's 119.4 grams in one mole. Yep. Also, a this would also a 0.1 mole solution. So the mole fraction of the acetone, I'll call it ACE maybe, will be 0.1 over 0.1 plus 0.1, which of course is 0.2. I can do that without a calculator. Yeah. That's 0.5. I already put my calculator down. Yep. This, is, this is all monkey math. And the mole math of uh, chloroform, CL or whatever you want to call it, not, don't, you know, I would say C, clo, clo. Um, would also be 0.5, right? Because it's the same thing. Yep. Now, so the P total will be the mole fraction of the acetone, which is 0.5 times the vapor pressure of the acetone. Now, which one is the acetone? Uh, acetone is 345. I, Not that it matters, because they have the same yeah, fraction. Yeah, that's true. But it, it, it yeah. normally, you, that would matter. So yeah, we'll write that. Then this will be 0. 0.5 times 293. It's kind of like an average of the two, sort of. Yeah, it is in this case. Yeah. 319. 319. So that's simple. You just do it that way. OK? Not terribly hard, is that question, was it? Nope. All right. This is going to be a short lesson. This I think so. We've got some cool demos, though. Yeah, All right. Hey, colligative properties. What's a colligative property? There's a funny word. Yeah. Colligative. It's a colligative property. <laughs> That's radio voice. That was pretty good. Hey, I've got the radio voice. Uh, can I sell you a car? <laughs> Sorry, guys. It's kind of scary. Yeah, very scary. I don't want to sell you a car. pink solution. All right, pink solution. Yeah, All right, tell me about colligative properties. Um, the colligative properties is when you dissolve something into a solvent it changes the properties of that solvent. It changes the boiling point, it changes the freezing point, um, changes something called osmotic pressure. I think um, the key thing yeah. is, is, it, is, is it's where something, it doesn't matter what is dissolved. Right. So I just want to write this, doesn't matter what is dissolved. It depends on how much of it. Just the concentration. And actually, typically, well, not always. I say typically, we, yeah, typically, most of the times we're going to work with molality yeah. units here. Yeah, I'm pretty sure all the calculations have molality. Uh, right? But not with osmotic pressure. That's, that's molarity. Oh, yeah. 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 All right. So, actually, what I want to do is we want to illustrate this with a, a demo. We're going to go 